Hello there, dear Spellweaver community, and welcome to the patch. I almost said analysis, but you know, I'm a noob in Spellweaver, so I wouldn't call this video a patch analysis video. I would rather call it like a patch overview vi video. Because, yeah, lately, um, speaking last Friday, there was like a big balance patch coming out. Like, no, no one knew what they were gonna uh, patch exactly, but the developers just said they are gonna change like the way some heroes play and they try to make like they try to overthrow the meta basically. So, they changed some cards and they actually also changed the abilities of some heroes. And I'm here to you know give you my new perspective on the patch. And so far, by the way, I gotta say, it definitely shook the meta. It's shook nasty right now. So, let's head on. Like, I opened the game so we can actually look at the cards that they changed and also look at the heroes that they changed. So, but first, I would say I'm just gonna read off the little forum post that probably everyone has read by now. By the way, I'm a little bit surprised that um, the big names, like The Fuzz, I think an album actually made a podcast about it, but... Um, yeah, the big content content creators for Spellweavers that actually know stuff about the game, like the fuss um, and people like that. I didn't make a video yet, which is kind of weird, but, you know, at least you got a new per perspective on it. So, here we have the balance... the balance... the balance changes discussion from IFCO on the forums. This balance update starts a new direction into which the game is heading. Um, I made a little, little chart, by the way, that I'm going to show you at the end. To so we have an, like an overview on what they buffed and what they um, what they buffed and uh, which uh, how many cards they buffed and how many cards they nerfed. So we're gonna gonna look into that. We have started toning down the cards that were too universally played, that were too obnoxious to play against, and the ones that create too big swings on the board. We will try to shape up a meta where it isn't mandatory for each deck to prepare against Cataclysm, against a never-ending stream of big threats, and against a super quick aggro rush at the same time. Hopefully we can achieve this and have a game with a much better gameplay experience. Even though, gotta say, there were obviously like some decks that were played all the time. Just speaking about Heal Million, by the way. And, and, but by the way, also the the guy that you need for Heal Million that we also played in uh, rank, by the way, and got a win with that. Um, they also changed her million, but we get to that. I gotta say though, against like big quick rush, I'd almost almost say like if you go um. If you go Dominion and you have Cataclysm, I think Cataclysm is kind of the answer to Quick Rush, but okay. The current update mostly deals with the cards that are the biggest offenders. We have made a lot of cards much softer in their effect, hopefully preventing the effect of one card turning the game around too abruptly. Yes, we realized that Cataclysm does exactly the same. There was simply no good solution for tweaking its effect, with, which couldn't... Yeah, which couldn't lead to it being abused even more. Regarding New Horizons, yeah, I said, like, the fuss said that, actually, that New Horizons might get removed. At least that was, like, his his take on it, because what New Horizons what New Horizons does is basically it just allows... Like, you played uh, Wisdom with um, Dominion, and with New Horizons, you could just... What Dominion did, what, what Dominion did basically, was, like, they skipped early game and, like, hit head straight into late game with New Horizons and Power Surge, basically. Regarding New Horizons, we would like to see what would happen after the changes. There is simply no way of changing the card without outright killing it. Yeah, I think that's the problem right here. Some cards that were enabled by New Horizons have been changed, so let's see where the changes led us. So they didn't change New Horizons, but the cards that, like, um were associated with it, I guess. This is most... Uh, by the way, I don't know which card associates with New Horizons, to be perfectly honest, but uh, yeah, we'll see. This is mostly a nerf patch, and we know that this is always somewhat unpleasant. Yeah, if you, like, nerf everything, that's that kind of sucks always. To spark some changes in the decks that are played, we've toned down all deck archetypes that were currently ubiquitous? Okay, I don't know that word. Sorry, I'm not an English native speaker, but... Uh, yeah, so they nerfed all the cards that were, like, in the meta, I guess. And that are, like, always present in certain decks. We will wait for the meta to adapt, and then we will know which cards need some more love. Let us know what you think. So, now they basically nerfed most of the cards, and then they want to see, like, how the meta shifts around that, and then which cards don't get played, I guess, and who need to get buffed, I guess. So, okay, that's good. 
So we start off with Order, Hermillion. Just what I wa was talking about. Hand of Justice. Ah, uh, here we go. The hero skill has a var variable cost of 1 plus the number of creatures affected capped at 3. So, let's look right into that. I made a deck with all the cards that were changed. So, let's go into edit deck. And there we have it. Hermillion Hand of Justice, Tireless March. So, it costs like 2 aspects and... One mana has a recharge time of three. Pay up to three mana, ready that many allied creatures and restore their full HP. Move to your deploy phase. So basically it's still the same um, the same skill, but before that, Tireless March would ready all creatures at once. And now you can now you have to choose and there is a maximum cap at three. Which is ultimately a nerf, definitely, but um it definitely prevents Heal Million from going out of hand too quickly, pun intended, out of hand. Um, so yeah, definitely a nerf, but I don't think it's that big of a deal, to be honest. And like making making them pay additional mana for how many creatures they want to ready, so, sounds reasonable, that's a good, that, that, that's good, I'm, I'm fine with that. Word of Grace, you can 2 life plus 1 extra for each of your order levels, definitely a nerf. Because I played that in the last. Oh wait, I gotta go here. I played it in the in the uh, Heal Million deck also. I, 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 I still think you see that in Heal Million. To, to be honest, like you gain two life plus one extra life for each of your other levels. Before that, draw a card. Was it there before? I think so. Um, yeah, but before it was, um, you get two life for each of your order levels. Now you get two and only one for each order level. So that means if you have like four order levels before. Uh, you got 8 HP, now you get 2, and then, of course, 4 more, so 6. Definitely a nerf, but as I said, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still on every heal million deck. But definitely definitely a nerf. Kinda sucks, actually. In still life, level requirement is back to 2 from 1. Uh, let's look at that. In still life. Yeah, so 1 order and 2 randoms for that. Also, a kind that you, uh, a kind, a card that you also see always in Heal Million. So, um, yeah, cost got increased for that one. It's okay. Wisdom, Library Guards. You must pay one mana to draw the card. So yeah, before that, there we have them. Library Guards. Before that, Library Guards was in every Wisdom mono and in every other deck that required Wisdom because you know it's a good blocker. It's a three-two. Or 2-3, because people always say attack first, but I'm the one that actually goes health first and then attack. So a 3-2 is a good blocker, has 3 speed, that's perfect, that's a good creature. And you always throw a card, draw a card when you play them, but now you have to play uh, and now you have to pay one mana to draw the card. And I think that's that's pretty good. I'm down with that. Still, like I think Library God is still in every deck because it has like good stats, and you know draw a card is always awesome. But yeah, only when Library Guards enters the field, obviously. Then we have Shifting Alright, mana cost increased to 2 from 1. I think Shifting Alright is... Yep. Shifting Alright is chickens. Um, I actually... Um, no, I actually played against uh, chickens once. That was in, I think, one of the ranked games that I played. Um, I just Noxious, Noxious fumed that right away. Yeah, it was uh, with the Nefaros Reanimator right away. I played against uh, chickens. But I just nipped it in the bud, just uh, like... Noxious fumed it right away before it got out of hand. Before it was one mana and one wisdom, so now it's like two mana and one wisdom. Still, it could get out of hand pretty quickly, but um, I think I think you can still deal with it, to be honest. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. But definitely a nerf right there. Then we have sub Sunborn Subordinate. Attack decreased from two. Add to two from three. Let's see. Sunborn. Uh, da, 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 that little guy right here. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember this one. And if you play it with Wisdom, of course, he is life bound. Still, everything is the same. But before it was a 3 3, and now it's just a 3 2. Okay, definitely a nerf right there. And I think probably also because it got. Because it was. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it was also Heal Million. Because, you know, if you play it with Order and you get life bound. Obviously, that's like three hit, three health for you if you do it correctly, but now you only get two. So a nerf right there from a 3-3 three, three to a 3-2. Three, two. 
Then we have the Frost Elemental, mana cost decreased to 2 from 3, level increased to 1 wisdom from just wisdom. Wait, let's see, that, 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 that's always weird right away. Let's see, Frost Elemental. Uh, what was it before? Yeah, before it was wisdom, now it's one random and one wisdom. And what was the other one? Uh, mana cost decreased. So yeah, definitely a... Yeah, like that That was one card that also didn't get like... You couldn't see it anywhere. The cost got increased, which is a nerf, but... Um, the mana cost got decreased, so it's definitely better in that aspect. So it's kind of like a balance. And it might see some play right now because it's a good it's not a good attacker, obviously, but it's a good blocker. And also you can choose like a creature that you want to freeze, so Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna play this. Like I have some decks that would definitely where, they, where, where Frost Elemental would definitely fit. I can I can see that happening. Sure. Then we have Charged Alright. Starts with two energy from one. Energy regeneration removed. I hate this change. Charged alright. So, you know, I'm a big fan of gimmick decks. I made a target deck that I'm definitely gonna play in rank because everyone says target is garbage, but I'm pretty sure I can make use of it. I won't get any wins because I'm terrible at the game, but it's still fun to play and that's the point, right? Um, I love sham- I love- I love, blah, 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 I love sh uh, totems and shamans. I love, um, I also made like, you know, gimmick decks are just the, the, the most fun. I made, a, I made a deck with where everyone is deadly. I made a deck where everyone is flying. And of course, one, one of the game mechanics that I love the most about Spellweaver is actually right next to Totems. Um, but that goes hand in hand is mana or energy. And I love playing around energy because there is so much fun stuff that you can do. Like in one game against my friend Zig. If you haven't watched it, definitely check that out. I played, uh, we played... Yeah, we played, um, I think it was the hentai battle, not, not totally sure. But I played this uh, card and I actually managed to get, I think, 10 energy with uh, Moonlight Patrol. So I buffed it at one turn to like a 10-10 and it's just always fun. And I love, in, in, in energy decks, I love playing cards where they just like gain mana by surviving, by, you know, you entering a new turn. And, you know, that started off as one mana, or, or one energy, sorry. Which was bad, but na but it like filled up the mana over time, and then you can like you know shift the ma uh, the energy from charge all right around, and now you can't do that anymore, and that's that kind of sucks. I don't know if like charge all right was always overplayed. I'm not sure in which deck. I've, um, yeah, I can see that in shaman in totems, but I'm not sure. Like totems, to for totems you usually play. I can see it with wisdom. But, but the way I play totems is Rage and Corruption, because those are the best um, totems in my opinion. You always have to throw in Rage, because Rage just has the best totems, I think. But, yeah. That that definitely limits Charged or char <laughs> Charged Alright's ability. And you might, if you need mana, you might go for other ones that actually provide mana now. So, that kind of sucks. Because, like, for a 1-1, that's not really worth it. Even though, like... It, the, the mana cost and the aspect costs are pretty cheap, but still, that kind of sucks. Alright, then we have um, Dust Titan. Starts with 4 energy from 3, and the stats are now 4 attack, 4 hit points from 3 attack, 3 hit points. Energy regeneration removed, another one right here. So, starts with 4 energy from 3, that's a buff. The stats are 4-4 four, four from 3-3, three, three, that's a buff, but the energy regeneration is removed, and that's a big nerf. Uh, Dust Titan, there we go. Um, okay, I can see why, though. I can definitely see why they removed the energy regeneration, because shocking a creature renders it obsolete, basically, for, um, for, the, ne for the next enemy turn, obviously. So I can see why they removed that, but you can, you know, still shift mana around, and there are still cards that um, have uh, energy regeneration, so not too big of a deal, but definitely... Like, m mostly a buff, I would even say. Mostly a buff. Because, you know, mana cost, aspect cost are still the same. It got buffed to a 4-4. Four, four. That's pretty good. And you can, like, shock two creatures at, at right, right from the get-go. So, yeah. I would say that's a buff, still. Alright. Next one. That was everything for wisdom. Yeah. Now we head to nature. 
Kino Reeves, Edge of the Spear. You can now play any creature of level 2 or less under Kainu. You pay the full cost and the skill cost is 0. Um, so at the beginning of the game, I would say it's a... Uh, that's hard to say. Like, I wouldn't say that's a nerf or a buff. I would just say that's a change, actually, because before that... Let's go into edit deck and let's check this guy out. Here, here we have it. Yeah. Weapon mastery, zero mana and has a two round cooldown. It's still the same. Play a creature with level two or less from your hand under Kainu Reefs at the start of your next turn. Put that card onto the field with a might emblem. So the might emblem is still there, obviously. Wouldn't make sense otherwise. Um, so yeah, you just pay for the, the mana cost for the creatures. Um, I don't know how much the spell was um, before it changed because I never really played Kainu Reefs. But, um, ultim yeah, ultimately it's just a change. You know, some, some creatures you need to pay, like, more mana, some you need to pay less. But since it's only level 2 here, uh, only to level 2 creatures, um, yeah. It's hard to say, actually. You just pay it, you just pay it, like, if you would, like, play it normally. So, yeah, that's good. I would say that's good. Reasonable. Next one, Tornado Outbreak, mana cost increased to 2 from 1 level, increased to nature from 1 random and 1 nature, I guess that that's what it is. Let's see, Tornado Outbreak, there we have it, 2 mana, alright. What, what was it before? It was actually just 1 mana, but you needed 2 aspects and now you only need 1, so... Yeah, that's like the removal spell from nature, so you're, so you're gonna see it in every nature or nature com combination. Like, mono, mono nature and in every deck that runs nature as a second or first aspect, you're definitely gonna see in Tornado Outbreak still. Um, so yeah, it's still something to fear about, obviously. Landslide, mana cost decreased to 3 from 4. So yeah, <laughs> before that, when, when it had like 4 mana last time, I didn't see that anywhere, and also the fuzz mentioned it when they did, they just destroyed the card with making it like four mana, so no one ran landslide anymore because because it was too expensive. But now it's back to three mana. It's uh, two aspects, and you can put two two cards with mana cost two or less from the field onto the top of their owner's deck. Um, wasn't there a time where they just like removed all cards from the enemy? Nah, that wouldn't make sense, right? But yeah, mana cost two or less, so that's not too much. I can see them. I can I can see nature running that, but still not too sure. Even though I think like making it two mana is maybe too overpowered. Then oh, that sounds good. I can I can see that card mixed in somewhat, but not necessarily though. There <laughs> there is still tornado outbreak. Um, Centaur Illusionist decreases only the cost of the creature you return. So I never played that, by the way. That's one of the new ones, I think. Centaur Illusionist, there we go. Uh, you may return a non-Centaur creature you own to your hand if you do that creature cost two less this turn. And what was the change? Decreases only the cost of the creature you returned. Yeah, I don't know. I had that card, obviously, but, um... I don't know. I never, I never played this card. So, can't say anything about that, but that definitely sounds like only returns one random a random creature also. Um definitely sounds like a like a nerf though. Summon a druid. I know that guy. Level increased to one random aspect, one nature from only one nature, and hit points increased to two from one. So that's a that's a pleasant change actually. Like they made it a little bit more expensive. You must pay for the support roll for like the one mana, the second creature card you play this turn costs two less, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, like, before it was the 1-1 one, one that died to literally anything, like, you can play, like, a Plague Vermin and, you know, use this ability and Summoner Druid is just dead. Now, with two hit points, he might, um, he, <laughs> then that might be some more longevity for the Summoner Druid, even though you're mostly playing on support line. You can still kill him, obviously, with Noxious Fumes and, um, Assassinate. But yeah, the two hit points definitely prevent him from getting killed by everything, which is which is a good change. Also, like the two aspects for that sounds reasonable, definitely. So you can play that like right from the get-go and get some crazy shit in as nature. Corruption. I think that's the that's the 
deck that get, gets run the least? At least I haven't like really seen that in the pro scene lately. Corruption, consume spirit, decreases only the hit points and increase only the attack of the affected creatures. So not necessarily a nerf. I would say that's a change, definitely. Let's look at that. Here we go. A creature gets, gets minus X hit points and another creature gets plus X attack until end of turn where X is your corruption level. So you mostly... Uh, use that to get rid of an enemy creature, obviously, and to buff your creature, and, um, yeah, it's just a change. It's not necessarily a nerf, I would just say there's a change, because that's exactly how you would do it, you know, like, get rid of an enemy creature and get more attack for your creature, therefore, ther therefore, definitely just, just a change. I think that's reasonable. Before it was, of course, you drain the um, hit points and the attack and then get the hit points and the attack for your creature. Spoils of War, mana cost decreased to 2 from 3. So definitely a, definitely a buff right there. Spoils of War, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Let's take a look at that. Spoils of War, there we go. If 3 or more creatures... Ah, yeah, that, that card. If 3 or more creatures died this turn, choose 1, draw 3 cards or summon 3 Enchained Souls onto the field. Uh, yeah, mana cost decreased to, to 2. I think I also heard the fuss talking about that card being complete and utter garbage, but um, the thing is, you know, also, that, 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 that brings me to that, like, what I also liked playing is, oh, and still like playing, that's still possible, is um, fill the board, I called that. It's basically where you just, it's quantity over quality, and there was two aspects that um, are able to do that and I actually uploaded one video one was with uh, order and the other one was uh, with corruption and with corruption you just play um, you just play zombies and you play totem obviously totem of the damned and for order you just play um, the standard order hero and then you like spawn militias all the time and you know you play creatures that buff those um, militias like um, the horseback rider, I don't know how he's called exactly, and the master tactician, obviously, that just buff your militias into obscurity. And that's the only the only time I can see three or more creatures dying, to be honest. Because if you if you destroy three creatures of the enemy, then you almost won. Not necessarily, but you almost won, I guess. And if you lose three creatures, I mean you know, you can come back from that. You can come back from that if you just summon like three enchained souls. Or draw three, car three, three cards and get extremely lucky, but... Yeah, before three mana, now two. Might see some play. Might see some play. But yeah, like for, you know, if you just go for quantity over quality, I'm definitely sure that that card is gonna see some change. Uh, it's gonna see some play, obviously. That's it for corruption. Now we had... Oh, wait, did I... No, okay, that's alright. Now we head into Dominion and there is the biggest... Change of them all, I think, that is going to affect the meta on a large scale. Because Dominion is just overpowered, let's just face it. So that that aspect is going to see the most nerfs, I'm definitely sure. And there we have it. Despina, the standard hero. Insatiable soul, skill redesigned. You can pay 1 plus X mana up to 5 to transfer X mana into your next turn recharge time 2 turns. That breaks my heart a little bit, but let's see. And there we have it. Despina Insatiable Soul. So, inner power. Before, you paid 3 mana, and with those 3 mana, you you just um, recharge all of your uh, mana, mana crystals. And now, it is capped at 5, and you can choose how many... Like, basically, just with the her Hermillion, you choose how many um, creatures you want already, and you pay that amount of uh, mana for that capped at 3. And now, with this one, it's you pay... You can uh, choose to how many, um, how many uh, you want to refill, and it goes up to 5. The cap is at 5. And, um, yeah, you get plus 1 the next turn. Not immediately, the next turn, you get plus 1 mana for each 1 mana that you paid with a recharge time of 2. Yeah. That's a nerf, most definitely, because, you know, they see, okay, he used in a power, he might do something stupid next turn, so I gotta prepare for that. Um, you know what I always like to play? <laughs> I like to play um, Power Seeker because of, and it, like, it, it, it works like a charm with the Spina before, because he just um, buff up Power Seeker, then you refill, refill your mana crystals, and then you buff him again, and you basically won the game. I, like, I just 
love that card, you know. It's power seeker all the way. But now with the nerf to Despina, it's gonna be hard to play power seeker. I definitely can can say that. And yeah, the, you know the enemies can can like react actually now because if they see that you buff that, that you're gonna buff yourself up for the next turn, um, even though what's kind of weird is that you refill your mana crystals anyways if you go into the next turn but maybe if you have like seven mana crystals let's say and you buff up five then you have 12 mana crystals next turn that might be the thing like you actually go over time basically um but yeah overall a nerf but i can still see the speeder being played also because like the cooldown is just like two turns so and it only costs one mana Overall, and you can ch you can choose how much you want to pay. Ultimately, a nerf, but I think this pina is still viable, definitely. Coronas the Blood Reaper only puts a might uh, puts might emblems on the soul rave ra soul raves. I think he means ravens that don't have one. Uh, Coronas. There we go. Lose two lives, summon a soul raven onto the field at the end of the turn. If the enemy hero was dealt damage this turn, put a Might Emblem on each allied Soul Raven without a Might Emblem. So yeah, before you could buff those guys to insanity, I think, you can just put Might Emblems on them all the time until they were actually unkillable. Unkillable. Only with Cataclysm, obviously, or with Landslide, maybe. But uh, yeah, definitely a nerf right there, even though... Was Coronas overplayed? Because I can't recall seeing them... Maybe he was, maybe like with the Spina, they were like, I think in um, pro games, you can like, you have to choose three decks and you can choose to ban one of the enemy deck. And maybe that's why they didn't, were why, why they weren't even listed in uh, the meta, because I, I can, I can imagine like Coronas and the Spina, like basically the minion heroes getting, um, getting outvoted right away from, from uh, the respective enemy. But yeah, definitely a nerf right there. Deservingly so, I would say, because that sounds insane beforehand. Chakri, Riot Instigator. Attack decreased to 3 from 4. Let's see, I think that's the legendary, isn't it? Uh, gotta go for... Uh, oh, wait. Gotta go right here. Gotta go fast. Chakri, there we go. Riot Instigator, when Jackery enters the field, and at the start of your turn, put a target emblem. Ah, yeah. I put that guy in the target, in my target gimmick deck. Gotta run that with Dominion, though. Oh, well. Yeah, attack decreased to 3 from 4. So before it was a 4-4, before it was a 4, four now it's a 4-3. Four, 3 three mana, 2 aspects. Um, Yeah, I think... I think that's definitely justified. 4-3 for, for a legendary. And actually for one with a pretty good with a pretty good um how you call it? Spell, I would say. Or with a pretty good effect that you can put onto your creatures or the enime creatures. Yeah, it's justifyingly so. 4-3, 2 speed. Sounds good. Before 4-4, four, four, yeah. Oh, I was about to say, what I want to see is a nerf for the fucking raging minotaur. You know, I played against, I think it was cloning that in the last ranked video that I uploaded and I fucking hate Raging Minotaur ever since and I fucking hate freaking um, cloning that. Even though like nobody really plays that anymore apparently. But yeah, Raging Minotaur, attack decreased to 4 from 5, you piece of shit. <laughs> I hate that card. So now it's, uh, okay, it's still 2, plus 2 speed, oh yeah, during your turn, yeah, that's why, that's why that fucking guy wrecked shopped all the time. Wrecked chopped. Wrecked shop. And at the start of your turn, Raging Minotaur these dude blump deals two damage to you. So that's still the same, but it can't kill everything because before it was a 5-5, five, five, now it's a 5-4. Four, four. And I can live with that actually. I can live with that. Because eh, I was, I was about to say, like eh, not, before it was easy to kill him with corruption if you had like noxious fumes, but before you needed three to get rid of him. Okay, you still need three, never mind. <laughs> I just looked at the tech there. Um, but yeah, now you can actually block him and he might not kill your creature if you also have a five drop out there. Mm, definitely a nerf, four damage. I'm fine with that. 
like basic and basically half of the, of the damage that he's gonna deal to you in the next turn. So yeah, I I refuse to play that card. I just hate it. <laughs> Slave, gladi Slave Gladiator, HP decreased to 1 from 2. Um, I think that's the 0 mana card, isn't it? Um, where is that fella? There he is, Slave Gladiator. Yeah, 0 mana, 2 aspects, a slave, and is now a 1-2. Was it before a 2-2, two -two, right? Yeah, before it was a 2-2, two -two, now it's a 1-2. Um, justifyingly so. Now you can kill that guy. He's only two speed, so... Yeah. He might not be overplayed anymore. I still... I still think he's gonna be played in every slave deck there is. And also, maybe with cloning that. If you can summon him with that, but I'm pretty sure you are. You can. Um, but yeah, I want to. Now you can kill him with basically everything. Also, just with the Plague Vermin, you know. Just sacrifice him, use his ability, and there you go. That's good. Blood-seeking mutant only gets a might emblem if it doesn't have one. Uh, that's a little bit weird because there he is, blood-seeking mutant. Um, so I think you. It was. Wait, only gets a might emblem if it doesn't have one. So yeah, how it worked before is you put that on a, for example, on a one-one. You get a, it gets a weakness emblem, it's dead, and you get the stats for Bloodsucking Mutant right away, so it's a 3-3. Three, three. Or you can use that on any creature, and you kill that, and you get a 3-3 three, three Bloodsucking Mutant next turn. Or if you kill if you kill that with the with the weakness emblem. Um, maybe before... That's also, by, by the way, one of the decks that I'm working on currently, that I uh, play like an emblem deck. And maybe before, you could put like multiple might emblems on him. So if you play, let, let's say you play Bloodseeking Mutant with Nature with Keanu Reeves and you get a Might Emblem if you put him under Keanu Reeves and then let's say the enemy has like a Plague Vermin, let's just use this guy, um, you put a Weakness on, on Emblem on him because you know when Bloodseeking Mutant enters the turn you get one Weakness Emblem and then he gets a Might Emblem if he kills him. So if you put it on the Plague Vermin and he's already a 3-3 from Keanu Reeves, you can't buff him to a 4-4 I guess. Because he already has a Might Emblem. That's an... I don't know if that were If actually... and If anyone actually, like, played it like that, but... It sounded fun. <laughs> kind of sad that they removed that, though. But yeah, definitely a nerf for the Bloodseeking Mutant right there. Before, of course, you know, before he... Before, <laughs> previous patches before, I saw the videos from... Um, Forest Bear Studios, and, you know, when I... Went into hibernation with a spell we were because I played it before. Um, I saw that with Bloodseeking Mutant, you did that every time. Like you put a weakness emblem on an on an enemy creature, you killed it, and then you can put a weakness emblem on another creature and then buff him again. So that was OP. Then they nerfed him, and now they nerfed him again because he was still playable apparently. All right, inherited wealth. Oh, I fucking hate that card. Inherited wealth, one of the newer cards. You don't. Play the slave so they can no longer get swift from the Eva's hero skill. Yeah, I played against inherited wealth and I fucking hate the hate it for that. So yeah, that's still the same though. One mana you may pay the mana cost of the next slave card in your deck using inherited wealth's energy. If you do put that card onto the field, shuffle your deck, or you play pay. You pay two, uh, two mana, transform an allied creature into a spoiled aristocrat. Use inherited wealth's power on the outside combat during your turn. Uh, so yeah, so you don't play the cards anymore. Apparently before it was popular to play Dominion Nature with Neeva, and then you then you spam the fuck out of inherited wealth. Puts and then use uh, Neeva's, stand out Neeva, uh, Neeva's spell or ability. Make everything swift and uh, make the enemy rage. All right. So definitely a nerf. And Cataclysm! Yeah, he mentioned it in the introduction to this. Mana cost increased to 6 from 5. Is there any other card in the game, maybe, that has a cost of 6? I'm not sure, but it looks weird, I gotta say. But yeah, destroy all creatures. And of course from Scatador. Scatador's bidding or Scatador's bitching as the fuss calls it. Still not touched, by the way, but still probably played in every Dominion deck because it's awesome. And I still, uh, I'm pretty sure Cataclysm is still in every Dominion, in every Dominion mono and in every Dominion mix deck. I'm pretty sure because Cataclysm is just 
maybe the, uh, not maybe but definitely the best um the best uh, board wipe in the game with six mana it's definitely like shit I mean, five, you know, re reaching 5 mana wasn't too big of a deal because um, Dominion had Power Surge. And uh, now with 6 mana, still they use Power Surge, I'm pretty sure, because Power Surge wasn't touched. But um, it's it's getting harder. Especially like when you play the Spina and before you could Cataclysm and then, you know, refill your mana and then play everything you want still. But now with 6 mana it's, and with the changes to the Spina, it's expensive. It's still played. I'm pretty sure there are four copies in every Dominion and Mono and Dominion mixed deck, but um, you can't spam it anymore with the and definitely not with the Spina. So that's a good thing. Um, okay, and then we are at Rage. I'm pretty sure Rage gets buffed mostly, right? So we have Zash the Annihilator. Recharge time increased to four from three. Oh, I think if I'm not mistaken. Whoops, that was wrong. If I'm not mistaken, then that sucks ass. Uh, what was the reach? Sh 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 to four from three. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Actually, it's my favorite. Maybe, maybe now my favorite hero because um, one gimmick deck. I, I almost forgot that. That I really like playing is um, AOE area of effect. And Firestorm is just awesome. awesome. Firestorm is the freaking best ability in the game. It's an awesome board wipe. Comes close to Cataclysm, actually. And now, before, the recharge time was 3. The recharge time was 3, and now it's 4. Um, I gotta say, Firestorm saved my ass uh, multiple times. It didn't grant me a win, necessarily, but it definitely saved my ass multiple times. Also in the games with uh, that I played against Zig. Um, now the recharge time is 4, that definitely sucks, and, I mean, you know, before that you can see that the 3, three turns can save you, it's, it's not that much to wait for, it's still expensive with 5 mana and 3 aspects, obviously, 3, three aspects is easy to reach though, but the 5 mana, it takes a while, it's definitely late game, but, yeah, that hurts, that definitely hurts. Limited to four. That sucks. And then we have Burke the Uncontainable. You pay one plus X up to three to deal X damage instead of the damage being fixed to two. That's a that's a buff. And that's a hero. I know that for a fact. Burke. Here we are. So you can pay up to three mana. And Burke deals that much damage up to two enemy creatures on the, fr on the front line. They deal damage to Burke equal to their attack. That is awesome. Because, you know, I actually... I've seen some... Uh, I've, I've seen a post or a thread in the official Spellweaver forums. Link in the description below, obviously. And there was one guy that said Burke is the best hero. I didn't read the post, but I think that guy is really happy now. Because that's that's that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Like, I never played against Burke. Uh, not in ranked, not in friendlies, not against Zig Because he doesn't have the hero. Well, duh. But um, yeah, I also wasn't too sold on him, but I played it on played him on one uh, totem deck uh, because you know Forest Bear Studios did that, and I'm not really sure how he like works with. I mean, you know, I can see him working out with uh, totems. I can see him working with any anything basically. And I think before everyone, every rage deck had probably this guy Zash the Annihilator, maybe the Flamebringer, but um, I, I think mo mostly it was the the Annihilator, but. I can see Berg getting played now because you know it's it's capped at three, but um, yeah you just can you can deal um, yeah you can deal like basically six damage right there, three damage to two creatures that's awesome, and it might kill actually quite a bit now because you know most most cards got got nerfed anyways, and there are two more things that 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 wasn't mentioned here by the way they for some reason yeah they for some reason. Missed that out. Haunt will trigger... Yeah, that's like miscellaneous stuff, basically. Haunt will trigger off totem effects and other triggers even if the cost for them isn't paid. That's a buff in my in my book. And Haunt, I know that card for effect because like Zig, Zig placed it into Oblivion. I'm always doing the same fucking mistake. There we go, Haunt. 
<coughs> whenever this card, like you put it on an enemy enemy card, and whenever this card engages in combat, triggers or uses an activated power, you may summon an enchained soul onto the field. Um, which basically, um, what you try with that, either you gain one life if you sacrifice that, obviously, or you can use that to start a slave rebellion on the enemy field, and that's actually what Sig da what Sig did because he put that on infernal vultures, and I still, oh wait. He ha yeah, that, that's what it was. He played Infernal Vultures, and I played uh, Slavery. You know, the one where you don't get the Weakness Emblem with the helmet. Uh, put the the Vultures onto my field. I'm not exactly sure, uh, by the way, though. I, some, I, I know that Haunt was on that thing. And I'm pretty sure he played it. I'm not really sure how it was. Maybe we, like, like just bantered the Vultures back and forth all the time, but... Yeah, that was on my on my field, and I buffed the Infernal Vultures like 10 times on one turn, and I had like 10 Enchained Souls, but then your fate is in the hands of the enemy, because if you buff them or attack with them, Haunt gets triggered, and you know, you have like a couple of Enchained Souls on your field that do nothing, because they are controlled by the enemy. And if there is a Slave Rebellion, well, you know, you're just fucked, basically. Or the enemy just uses it and gains like one life for each, day, for each one he sacrifices. So now it triggers with totem effects and other triggers. Not sure what other triggers are, but totem effects definitely sucks because I like playing totems. Zash flame bling blah, 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 flame bringer now can't target the enemy hero. I think. Um, I don't learn that. <laughs> that means um, a flame bringer. Um. Can't target the enemy hero. Which wouldn't make sense. Because making an enemy hero block is not a thing, I guess. Because it's an enemy creature can block this turn. I'm not sure about that. Maybe it's a box fix. Zash Flamebringer's visual effect for the hero skill is now displayed as long as the skill is in effect. That's okay. That's good. Now the AI, AI won't sleep on creatures that already have sleep on them. Okay, I don't really play against bots, so okay. The player is no longer for the player is no longer forces. Okay, into the second tutorial mission, forced. But okay, I, I think we all grew grew out of that. But okay for newer players, or if you like make a Smurf account, don't do that. Fix the issue that prevented draft participants to get their cards after a server crash is also a bug fix. And I don't care about that because I don't like dra playing draft pick. So, yeah. There we are. That's the whole changes that we get from this patch. Now, overall... Um, there we go. Bam. So, overall, I made a little cheat right here. So, in general, right here, we have Haunt, which got a buff. And we have Zash, the Flamebringer, who got nerfed. Even though I would say there's a bug fix, but okay. We have Order, Hamillion got nerfed ultimately, you know, just ultimately, because before it was um, ready all creatures, now you have to pay mana and it's capped at 3. Word of Grace definitely nerfed, because, you know, before it was 2 mana for each order levels, and now it's 2 and 1 for each order level. Insta Life nerf, so overall Order got 3 nerfs. Three changes and three nerfs. So then we have library guards, definitely a nerf. Shifting all right got nerfed. Subordinate got a nerfed. Frost elemental is balanced. Charged all right is balanced because it starts with more mana, but it didn't get the recharge time anymore. Dust titan is balanced or balanced and buffed. I would say it, they, they remove they remove the the gaining uh, energy shenanigans, but uh, he overall has better stats now, and he starts with four mana uh, four energy right away. So three nerfs and one buff. Sort of. Two balances, obviously. Nature, Keanu Reeves is balanced, and I would even consider that a buff. It's definitely for early game. Tornado Outbreak is balanced. Landslide got a buff, most definitely, because um, the card is still the same, but it's less mana that you have to pay for it. Center Illusionist got nerfed, as well as Life Force Incarnate, and Summoner Druid got balanced, so we have two buffs and two nerfs overall. You know, Keanu Reeves, debatable, but I would say that's it, it, it tends to be a buff more than a nerf. Corruption got one nerf on Consume Spirit. Overall, but you know, you played that you you played it you played the card for what it does now, basically. And Spoiler 4 got buffed. Then we have because you know, less mana. 
And then <laughs> we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight changes for the minion. All eight changes are nerfs. The Spina got changed ultimately as a nerf because it's still largely the same. But you have to wait one turn and it's capped at five. Coronas nerf. Jakri got nerfed. Raging Minotaur got nerfed. Slave Gladiator got nerfed. Bloodsick Mutant got nerfed, sort of. Inherited, we Inherited Wealth got nerfed only with Neiva though, so yeah. Cataclysm got nerfed, definitely. Six mana for that. That still looks weird. And yeah, overall, eight changes for the minion, and eight of those were nerfs. Tells you a lot about the minion. So overall, we have 17 nerfs, and we have three buffs, and the buffs go to... Yeah, ultimately to, um, to haunt, so that's corruption. Two for corruption, and two for nature. Every everything else got nerfed, but... You know, that's what he said in the, in the beginning. That he changed. Never learned that. That uh, ultimately, that's like a nerf. And now he, now they want to see how the meta shifts and how the pros are adapting, and um, if there is actually like an increase in different decks and uh, that cards that get, they didn't see play before see play. And I can actually see Frost Elemental being in an AOE deck, by the way, because Wisdom. Yeah, my beloved Sash the Annihilator got nerfed because um, the next ranked video that I wanted to show you is AoE with Zash, but it's also um, possible with Darius, by the way, but I'm definitely, I'm, I'm sticking to that, though. I still think Zash the Annihilator is, um, definitely works out. And I'll have to change to Burke. Maybe I'm gonna put them in the Totem deck. But yeah, ultimately, that's it. That's the huge, uh, huge buff, yeah, the huge patch that definitely shakes up the meta. I'm definitely gonna look. I'm I'm looking forward to how the the uh, the pro players are gonna adapt to that and what decks are gonna flourish. And I'm gonna I'm, I'm definitely curious about that because everything got nerfed. Most love actually goes to corruption in this one, and the most hate goes to deservingly so Dominion because every everyone and their mom played that. So yeah, as I said, curious on how we see the meta. Shifting and I'm definitely looking forward to um, Spellweaver in the upcoming days and I um, definitely have to make just make some adjustments and get those charged all rights out of my deck because yeah I'm gonna put other, other cards in there that Actually like gain mana without doing anything but by just merely existing but yeah, that's it I hope you liked a little overview of this patch let me know what you think about the patch in the comments below and what you think about the changes and what you want to see changed and uh, what you're gonna what, what do you think what cards are gonna get played less what heroes are gonna get pl get played less and which one do you see get more play overall let me know in the comments below thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next spell weaver okay my mic is on thankfully and I'll see you in the next spell weaver related video